much. That was that was about two or three verses too short, wasn't it? I mean, don't, don't you just um, hear some things with people sometimes and go, man, I wish I had talent. <laughs> that was that was really great. It's so great to see you all here tonight. I want to invite any kids who feel like it to come on down front here with me. Uh, and I would say, you know, maybe 12 and under. I mean, you can come down if you're older than that. But, um, and I would say if kids, if you're kind of on the fence about whether or not you want to come down, there is a little prize involved. So uh, I'm just saying it might be, it might be worth your time. Uh, yeah, see, nothing like a good bribe to, to get people interested. Come on down, you can just sit anywhere around right here, would be great. Uh, and actually, you can face me, though, if you want, because I'm the interesting <laughs> Okay, so, I mean, you see your parents every day. You don't really need to look at them, right? So, great. Thank you all for coming. You guys look amazing. Are you super excited about it being Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, what are you excited about? The food, right? Yeah, Sophia. Oh, I love that. Did you hear that? She wants to see the look on her parents' face when they open their gift. That is, that is a great answer. Anybody else have something that you're looking forward to? What are you looking forward to? Just like staying, just having the entire day in your PJs. Yes, the entire day in your PJs. That's really what Christmas is, is best known for. Anybody excited about presents? Like, yeah. You guys are really good to not even like have that be the first thing that you, you go to. I kind of expected that. Yes. Well, I'm so glad that you're, you're here tonight. And, um, and, you know, as I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about tonight, um, and am I like, do I like have just like image right on my face here for all you guys? It's kind of that natural glow. I'll come over to this side for a minute. If I'm gonna, am I gonna slip out of frame here on you, Tom? Yes. All right. So uh, I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about, and the first thing that I had as an idea was I wanted, to, I wanted to find this, there's this old ornament that I had when I was growing up that um, my own children make fun of every year because they think it's the ugliest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> it, in fairness, they're not wrong. But, um, so I went out to our Christmas storage. Um, Special thanks to our props department for this. We went all out on the props for our Christmas program here tonight. Um, so, so went out to look through uh, storage and see if I could find it, and you know what? It wasn't there. But uh, it turns out I did find some other things, and um, actually I'm glad because these other things I think are better to talk about. Yeah, Sophia? Well, I've got a couple of things to show you, actually. So uh, the first thing is actually pretty small. And actually, this isn't a real box, so I can just reach in here behind. <laughs> Sorry for the illusion of television. But uh, so anybody know what this is? Yeah. What is it? It's things that you hang your ornaments on so you can put them on the tree. Well, you're close. It does hang in a tree, but it's not for hanging your ornaments on. This. Smell that. So when, when I was growing up, we always had a, a real tree growing up. Um, but, uh, here, smell that. <laughs> then, uh, and we had, we had that for uh, a while when we, our kids were little. And then, you know, they get older and they start having allergies and stuff. And one year we thought, well, maybe it would be easier to do an artificial tree. And so then once you have an artificial tree, it's kind of got to be that every year because you paid for it, you know? So, uh, but I kind of miss the smell of a real tree, you know? And so these things are called sensicles that you hang in. It's a fake smell of a real tree that you hang in your fake tree to smell real. <laughs> so, can you, yeah, you can smell it from there, right? It's a little bit overpowering, you know? But um, it's a little strong, but it kind of smells like Christmas, right? A little bit? It still smells like a pine tree, right? Yeah, so I'm, I was just curious for you guys, uh, what, what smell do you smell that feels to you like, it's like, oh, that's a Christmas smell. What about? Um, so, like, candles, like, 
candles that are scented, like things happening on either Christmas Day or anything. Yes, so candles that smell like something else. <laughs> yes. What are some of those other things that you guys smell that you go, oh, that is, now it's Christmas really for me. Yeah, Sophia? The smell of candy canes, I know there's going to be like a pack in my stocking. Yes, candy canes, when you know there's going to be something in your stocking. Uh, what about the grown-ups? Any, any, any Christmas smells that come to mind for you guys? Cinnamon. Sorry? Cinnamon. Cinnamon, yes, that's a good one. What about for you? Well, you know, you're not far off from some things I'm going to talk about in a minute, but you're getting a little ahead of me. Lavender or peonies? Lavender or peonies? Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that with Christmas, but you know, that's good. Anything else? Cookies. Cookies. Orange. Orange. Yeah. Fire. I mean, there's a whole bunch of smells that we associate with Christmas because. Because your sense of smell is one of the things that's most attached to your memory. And so it, like, you smell it and you go, oh yeah, that, that makes me remember back what that was like. But that wasn't the only thing I found in the box, okay? I found some other things. Hi. So, anybody, anybody remember this sheet from, from last year? You guys can, can touch her. She's super soft. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, yeah. So it's really the best. Uh, you know, oh yeah, don't don't bend the leg. That's good. Um, but uh, we uh, we uh, got hurt last year for our nativity that we did here, and um, and you know we don't know for sure if there were sheep in the stable that night when Jesus was born, but there were shepherds, and they they might very well have had their sheep in a stable is where animals hang out, so that's quite possible. She's not the only animal that I found though. Um, you guys might remember this guy. This is a donkey. And uh, we've had this donkey around New Day for a long time. And, um, you know, actually, we had the donkey here last year to be part of the nativity, right over there in the wings. And, uh, you know what? We tried and tried to pull him out, and, and he's so stubborn. Donkeys. Like, if they don't want to go somewhere, they're not going to go anywhere. And, and he, actually, that's not true. He was there, but we just forgot that he was over there. So we didn't, we didn't bring him out last year. Is it um, soft? It's not very soft. It's just kind of wood. Um, you know, the one animal that we've never had with our nativity that kind of always goes with Christmas is a camel. Wouldn't it be cool, like, if we had a, a camel like the wise men had? That would be, that would be pretty fantastic. Oh, wow, look at over here. Wow, this is pretty amazing. Where, let me get over to you guys here. What, uh, what are you doing here? Where'd you come from? Uh, we're looking for Jerusalem. Oh, you're looking for Jerusalem. Yeah, uh, you want to go right down here, uh, go up to the hill, and take a left, and go about 6,800 miles east. Yeah. Okay? What? Wow, I mean... <laughs> What are the odds of a camel showing up right at that moment? I mean, that's incredible. Actually, all these things are going to start to tie together here in a minute. Um, because there's another thing I found. What is, what is this, you guys? Manger. It's a manger. What's a manger? Yeah, here. It's where animals feed out of? Yeah, it's where animals feed out of. It's like a feeding trough or a feeding box. And so this is where uh, this is where Jesus was found by the shepherds, right? He was in the he was in the manger because uh, if you remember what Paige just read a little bit ago, it said uh, this will be a sign to you. This is what what the angel said to the shepherds. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Now that word up there that says lying. That's a really uh, intentional word. It says that he was placed there in the manger, and they did that on purpose. God, God wanted Jesus to be found in this manger, in this feed box where the, the animals would normally be. And so we don't know if there were uh, animals there at the time, but this was the animal's space. And, and what it tells us is that 
the manger was on purpose, okay? That God chose that specifically. And like I said, this was, this was the animal's space where they would hang out, and it was right kind of in the middle of it, because, you know, that's where they, they put their, their mouths and their faces and everything. So he was right up close where all the animals would be in, in like this barn setting or a, or a stable. And you know what? I had a barn when I was growing up. And let me tell you something. Uh, Barnards don't smell like Christmas. They smell like tarts. They smell really gross. You know, like we had a lot of cows when I was growing up. Well, not a lot, a few at a time. And, uh, but the cows, the cows, cows have really bad breath, you know? And I was in charge of mucking out the stall. Isn't that soft, Sayla? It's super soft. It's the best. So I was in charge of mucking out the stall, and sometimes I would forget, and it would go really a long time, and it would be so foul-smelling, and there would smell awful. And, and hay, even, doesn't smell that great, and it kind of gives me hay fever. And so all that to say is that first Christmas when Jesus came down and he was in the manger, it wasn't a really great-smelling, Christmassy-smelling place. It was a place that didn't smell great, that wasn't really comfortable, and you know what? I love that, that that's what, that's where God chose to put Jesus, because that's a picture for us. Because that tells us if Jesus was comfortable being in this barnyard, guess what? It means that Jesus isn't afraid of the, the barnyard that's in our souls, right? Jesus isn't afraid to get close to the stuff that we go, oh, that's not, that's not very, um, I don't like that about myself, or I don't like that about my circumstances. You know, you can be going through something and go, well, that really stinks. And and Christ is right there in the middle of it. Yeah, Sophia. Um, so, um, who specifically placed in a manger um, um, humble, or is it, um, according to, like, Chris, the afraid of the barn, for example, um, was he placed in there to show that he isn't in his, um, afraid of the darkness inside of him? Yeah, I think that's part of it, is because... God put him down in this very lowly place to say he could get close to all the things that, you know, maybe there's stuff we don't really care for in ourselves or things that are hard for us, things that are sad, things that are painful. And Jesus gets right there because he's right there with us in the middle, in the middle of everything. And so we're going to keep talking here in a minute, but you guys have been so great. I'm going to let you go back to your parents, but before you do... You can go stop by page on your way. Now listen, there's, let's see, I think we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So you can pick out either a donkey or a sheep uh, that she has these little tiny miniature ones. And you can take that and that can be your reminder that Jesus came because he loves you. And he came to get down in the middle of life with you. And he's never leaving. And he's not afraid. And he's not, um, he's not ever going to shame you. For anything. So thanks you guys for so much for coming down. As you're going back to your seats, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the grown-ups a question here, and just uh, thinking about that that thought here for us. Um, what does it mean to you that Jesus came close and got right down in the middle of everything? Um, any any thoughts about that? For you? Does that strike anything for anybody? Yeah, Tom? Oh, you're just adjusting covering. the camera. Yes, adjusting the camera. As you're wondering. You raised your hand. I mean, I'm going to call on you. Anybody have anything that uh, that, that kind of comes to mind? The idea of Jesus coming down in the middle of things that are not great for us. Yeah, Ron. Yeah, it's just he came down to our level. I mean, yes. It's incredible the God of the universe came down. Yes. Yeah, just just right down in everything that's going on in the world. Yeah, Eugene we, Peterson said that described him as uh, uh, moving into the neighborhood. Yeah. Yes. The kind of a casual, but close and, and real, and, and less lofty, but more hands-on. Yes. Moving into the neighborhood. Yeah. It's a feeding trough. Sorry. It's a feeding trough. Yes. We are to feed on the Lord. Yes, yes. You're, you're headed right, you're tracking right with me. Yeah, no, that is that is really good. It's to see that he came into a, a feeding trough. Yeah, I, I uh, 
there's a quote from Esau Macaulay that I really like. He, uh, he was talking about the experience of black Christian slaves as they thought about the, the Christmas story. And, and he said this. He said, if God was willing to become a baby, he was surely not above coming into a slave shack to encourage a downtrodden people. The incarnation for the Christian remains God's great extending of himself all the way down so even the lowliest can reach him. That's really, that is our great hope at Christmas, uh, that, that Christ came down to be accessible and to be right in, in the midst of everything that doesn't always smell so great about life. Um, but, you know, he didn't, he didn't just come down to be close to us and to be, be with us in the midst of it. That's, that's great in and of itself, but he also came to do something about our situation, which another thing about animals is uh, they can't put the food in the manger themselves. When, it, when we had cows, like, they couldn't put the grain and the hay in the feed box. That was something I had to do for them. It had to be provided for them. And that idea of God providing for us, just like you were saying there, that idea of, of us needing him to feed us. Uh, Jesus even said, you know, I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. He, he came down right into that feed box uh, for us. He provided a way to actually deal with the source of the stink in life, I, evil and sin. Uh, he, he came right in to, to address it all and not just be with us in it, but to actually transform it and, and, and take that uh, away. Um, and and one, of the, one of the verses that I really love is in Ephesians that says, Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. What a sweet-smelling aroma. And so what that, what that tells me is that Christmas smells like Jesus to God. That's, that's what he remembers he, he remembers what Jesus did on the cross, what he did by coming for us. And uh, so, you know, when he sees all the mess that we have gotten ourselves into sometimes, all the things that, that we are burdened down with about life, uh, what he looks at is Jesus. And, and he says, you know what? I, I'm not afraid of anything that you're you're in whatever, whatever situation you may feel like you are in right now. Maybe it's of your own doing. Maybe it's stuff done to you or that you can't help. That, that Christ is not afraid to get close and be right there with you and actually transform the situation. That's, that's our hope at Christmas. Um, I really like what uh, Pastor Adriel Sanchez said. He said, to the person who does feel overwhelmed and disoriented and dried out spiritually during this season, I say welcome. This is for you. Christ is for you. And he comes to us in that dry and dark place and extends his grace to us. That's the gospel, that, that Christ comes all the way into wherever we're at, and he does something about it. Um, I, wanna, I wanna just leave you with uh, a little bit of a poem from Madeline Langle, uh, author of A Wrinkle in Time. She, she wrote this that I think just really captures what I'm trying to say uh, tonight and, and what is at the heart of the gospel. About Jesus, she said, he did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait till hearts were pure. Get that, he didn't wait till hearts were pure. In joy, he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt, to a world like ours of anguish, shame. He came, and his light would not go out. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our voices with, to raise our songs with joyful voice, for to share our grief, to touch our pain, he came with love. Rejoice, rejoice. God says that uh, when he thinks about Christmas, he thinks about Jesus and it smells sweet. It's the smell of pure love 
uh, and he is here with you today. No matter what you're going through, um, Christ is here for you and says, says welcome this Christmas. So I just want to pray for us as we close. And, um, you know, maybe you feel very far away from, from Christ tonight. And this, uh, this thought of him actually being close enough to be to whatever you're going through feels, feels very distant. And uh, so I want to pray for you. Um, God, for each of us here, some of us, some of us have been walking with you a long time and, and Christmas does feel uh, tired or feels like we've, we've forgotten the, the joy and wonder of the fact that you actually did get that close to everything we're going through. And for others, it just feels like the circumstances that we're in seem so deep and overwhelming that we, we can't see anything beyond that. And um, Lord, give us a fresh picture and a fresh idea of just um, how very near you are uh, and how powerful you are to take anything Anything, anywhere where we find ourselves, and, and you can you can transform it and, and make it yours and make it sweet smelling. And so, um, God, we just invite you in to all of it. Thank you that you're not afraid of all of it, that you love us, that you never leave, and uh, that you'll never shame us. Hallelujah. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for the message of hope that, that it gives us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys stand up with us. I love that line, Jeff. Uh, he came with joy to a tarnished world.